Is it really? I'm supposed to find a letter in here somewhere. Or the, uh... Or this quest. But it's not here. Maybe it's uh, like... Oh, there it is. Unfinished letter. Ronnie, I just heard what happened tonight. I ran to your house, but you were already gone. So now I'm writing this note. Is it true you killed him? I can't believe it. Why? What happened? I really need to talk to you now. Please, find a way to contact me when you receive this message. Since I know you can be very cautious. And to prove to you this is not a trap, let's use a code when we meet. I whistle my name. Jack, in Morse code. And you'll whistle yours. Okay. This way, you'll know it's really me. For now, it's a good thing you're hiding. The Wetwood boys are all over the neighborhoods, claiming they will punish the man who murdered one of them. I'm sure we could make an arrangement to settle things once the heat dies down. Okay. Now we have to convince this dude to go back. Who's you? I'll find you something. Who are you talking to? Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Do you need any help? Rest assured, I will help you, sir. Martin Nightingale, at your service. Please, take a look at my wares. Ha, <laughs> your merchandise. I don't really see anything worth having, no offense. None taken, sir, but please, I need to eat. Perhaps if you keep looking, you'd see something that takes your fancy. I mean, we can look. Show me what you have to offer then, Mr. Nightingale. Uh, risk blood sample, bomber factions and skulls, music box. Oh, I don't want to buy this one. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna buy this one. This one. Okay, we didn't read this yet. Vampire factions and skulls. The vampire and guards. Ah, vampire and the guard will never have a common interest. Never. Not as long as I live. Not after I die and pass the torch to another leader. I know some of us have witnessed a strange and huge vampire hunting down skulls, just like we do. He is well dressed and seems to speak eloquently. But don't be fooled. If this unknown leech and his friends seem to hate skulls as much as we do, some others offer them safe haven in exchange for obedience. Scouts in the north have reported that strange ceremonies occur in the secluded forests of Scotland. Ceremonies of blood and human sacrifice to old pagan gods? They may be adversaries to the London vampires, but none of these leech factions could be our allies. All vampires must be destroyed. And no alliance will be made between them and us. From the adversary by Kendall Stone. Founder of the Guard of Pruin. Oh, we should probably talk to him, yeah? Good evening, young man. There's no need to call me that, Dr. Reed. Are you not a young man? Let me be frank. You're as much of a businessman as I am a werewolf, right? Who the hell are you to question me? It's hard enough to stay clean when you don't have a place to sleep. Oh wow. I'm doing my best here. He missed such no a offense, good opportunity. I was merely pointing out the fact that you're unlikely to survive long if you continue wandering this path. And what should I do then, sir? Should I join the wet boot boys like so many others? No thanks. I'd rather be a bad seller than a dead gang member. That's a, that's a missed opportunity there. He, sh he should say, oh, I better prepare my silver bullets then. Like, make a joke. Oh, that's fine. What can you tell me about the neighborhood? Have you got any friends around these parts? Not really. Miss Gillingham smiles and says kind words, but I know she's lost her marbles, especially since her son died. Hello, T12. Hello, hello. Tell me about this crazy woman. Madness is often mistaken for other conditions. <laughs> the poor woman's mad, all right. Kind and all, but she has so much trouble remembering things. She's taken me for a son more than once. Okay. How interesting. I don't suppose you know what happened to her son. Jack, 
Rumor has it he tried to tackle some gang lads. I didn't know him well, but I heard he was a nice enough chap. His old ma still thinks he's around. That's not a funny thing, Martin, though. That's actually a very sad thing, to be honest. Why not try seeking help instead of peddling your wares? I'm sure there are people around here that would gladly help. There's always the night asylum. I heard it's run by a very nice man, but I'm no beggar. Not yet, at least. There is no shame in asking for help, my boy. Sometimes it can even be the best course of action. I don't feel okay with that. I'm gonna make a name for myself, and I'll do it by myself. Okay, we can, we can talk to Goodbye. Enid again, I guess. Knock, knock. Good evening, Miss Gillingham. May I come in? Of course, uh, of course. Oh, since we now have a level 3 mesmerism, uh, we should be able to convince uh, this dude to let us in the house. So we can treat his migraine. But wow, he single-handedly brings down the health of the district by 9%. Uh, wait, are you healing? Yeah, she's healing. So, Dr. T... Oh, you don't have these hints. Goodbye, Miss Gillian. That's fine. Wait, was there something to pick up here? No. Minis. Bullets. Huh? No. Okay. And there's a thing here. Wait, and there's nothing here. Nope, there is. Alcohol. Very nice. Oh, this was a bar, wasn't it? Actually, a pretty nice one. If it was clean and, uh, and all. That's a lot of blood. Dead. Okay. Now we need to talk to this dude, but... I guess we have to go to the shelter first, yeah? Oh, we didn't get anything from that? Okay. That's a shame. Is he still kneeling? Yep, he's still kneeling. Because we didn't go to sleep yet. Okay. Fortunately, it's close here, so. Rodney! Wait, is it Rodney? Rodney Mullen? No, Rodney Mullen was someone else. Rodney someone. Oi! 
Rodney, you're the man who killed that gang member, are you not? Is that why you are hiding in this godforsaken place? Yes, I did. I did not even know his name. Then why did you kill him? That arsehole always mocked me for the color of my skin. Usually I let it go. But not that night. We fought. He died. I mean, you can't really stay here forever. Whatever you've done, you can't spend the rest of your life hiding here. I just wanted to teach him a lesson, not kill him. I'm not responsible for a murder if I didn't want to commit it. I it mean, was an accident. no, it Believe was still. Believe me, Rodney, you won't survive here long. No matter what you did, you must go back to where you used to live. I'll go back to the docks then. But if I die, remember that the blood of Rodney Grader will be on your hands. That's going to be totally fine. Because even if you... Let's say you get in a fight in a bar. No one, no one wants to kill another guy in a bar fight. Like 99% of the time. They just want to smack someone in the face because he looked strangely at his girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. But if you if you smack someone, he falls and and hits his head on the curb, and dies. It is your fault, one hundred percent. I mean, I didn't really understand this guy's logic, but that's fine. Okay, but now we can rest and we can spend our experience points. Oh, hey, I can. Of it's course, locked. I can't. Okay. Do we know everything from this district? We do. If we could sanitize this, we could then talk to Edwina Cox and hopefully she would sell me a, a blue. Wait, wait, wait a second. 87% and she's the only one who's shit sick? You know almost everything about most of these people. There's something else happening that's keeping this down. Okay, well, let me sleep and spend my experience points. Wait, is this stuff here? Uh, I don't think we have anything to take apart, do we? Rivet. Ooh, rivets. Very nice. Because we do need rivets to, like, use the, uh, I mean, to use them, to make the best upgrade for, for stuff. Revolvers, here. You need, like, aluminum parts, so not sure where we get those. And you would need also aluminum parts. Okay, so first of all, I do want to upgrade my healing. It's 1300. Sure. I uh, don't really care to upgrade spring yet. It's only a thousand, so it's, uh, it's nice enough. Now, we can either increase the damage, or we can increase the area, or lower the damage. And this would be a 
DOT. A damage over time thing. I don't think I want this. Not sure how long this would... Uh... Oh, 3,000. Wait, no, 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 no. Cancel. Reset is like total reset. Good thing, uh... Good thing I noticed. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna spend 3,000 here. So now we do 100 damage more, which is fine. We're gonna be doing a lot more here and here, but, uh... This is fine for now. This would be 1,300. Uh, I don't want to spend... I don't want to spend that much. I, I want to keep above 2,000 experience points at all times. 2,000 or more. care too much about like capacity big thirst no biting can i can i increase biting i can increase it by another 150 percent okay at least this is gonna increase my level up again and yeah another 600 isn't gonna allow me to level up i think we would have to spend like a thousand five hundred, I want to say. The following night. Portrait of a sad saint. Oh, that's long. If you've ever lived near the docks of East End, and must know who Sean Patrick Hampton is, and if not, you must know. And if not, you might have heard of him. His name is starting to spread through the entire capital, and the song it sings is one of hope. Sean is the humble founder of the Hampton Asylum, an establishment that he built with his own hands and convictions. The building, an abandoned warehouse gracefully donated by the Dawson family, and renovated and transformed into what it is now. Uh, wait, into what is now? Into what it is now? There's a there's a typo here. It, oh no! Okay, I'm dumb. I'm such an idiot. Transformed into. Uh, into what is now the most famous asylum in London. I'm dumb. The poor and hungry are welcome under his roof, and with them he shares his food, his care, and his prayers. Sean Hampton came from a background of mi misery, but the hardships of life didn't disfigure or maim his profound trust in the Lord. If anything, the faithful man gained an acute empathy in exchange for the torments of poverty. His love of others is renowned throughout the docks. Rare are those who didn't witness Sean cry at the sight of an infirm veteran, an orphaned child, or a sick mother. That how he, that's how he gained his nickname, the Sad Saint of the East End. Sean Hampton is so respected that people still stay in his shelter, even after the Sad Saint contracted a mysterious disease which forces him to rest a lot and take his meals away from his flock. While well, in some other parts of London, people step back as soon as someone coughs in public. Men and women accept to eat and sleep in the Hampton Asylum. It's the safest place in the East End docks. The building looks dirty. The stench around the place is awful for a delicate soul. But there is hope and love there. And death, the death toll has been low and stable for days. Ew. And it's sanitized. Very nice. So we can, we can talk to Edwina. And we can talk to uh, Martin, and we can see if maybe they sell blue stuff. That would be really nice. And merchants have other stuff, okay? Please tell me it's sanitized. Yes. We can probably buy a blue part from uh, Milton. We should also talk to Rakesh, see if he's got anything. These, these guys get sick, that's okay. And this doesn't change because we don't know anyone here. A lot of people like single... Single entities without, like, friends. Only four friend groups, yeah. Okay, 
level. We did level up twice, which is good. Oh wait, I got a thing and I didn't read the letter, did I? My dear Jack, I write this letter as long as I have the strength and the will. Not that I have something to hide out fear, except perhaps to forget what I want to tell you. I always knew you would become someone important, someone good and nice. I knew it since you were a child, when you preferred to read books rather than going to play outside. I knew it when you helped me carry groceries before you went to school and cleaned the house after you came back. I'm proud, you, oh, I'm proud of you, my son, not only because I am a your mother, but because you deal so well with everything around you. I'm sorry I have recently become such a burden to you. Never forget, I love you. I hope you never forget you love me. Martin, why did you have this letter? Good evening, sir. Oh, this is this I'm guy. I'm glad to see you safe. I am not safe. I should never have come back here. My life is in danger. I know it. You're much safer here than in that contaminated area. Bullets kill people quicker than diseases and epidemics, Dr. Reed. Yeah, but it helps you. It hurts you for a shorter time. What can you tell me about this district? The East End Docks only knows one rule. Dog eat dog and blood calls for blood. The gang will have their revenge on me one way or another. What can you tell me about the locals? Most people would say that Sean Hampton and Tom Watts are good men who try to sort things out. But for me, the real boss around there was my best friend, Jack Gillingham. Jack Gillingham, you say? Everyone around there knew Jack. He was a rock. A mountain, even. He feared nothing. And he died for you. Okay, he's healthy, that's good. Your friend Jack has something to do with you fleeing to the contaminated area where I found you. I want to know more. Jack is dead. That's all you need to know. Dead because of me. So much violence. So much sorrow. All of that because I refuse to be insulted again. The docks are being consumed by violence. Any war you may have started was already brewing underneath the surface, just waiting for a spark to ignite it. Perhaps you're right. The district was doomed before I was born. But I cannot stop myself thinking that Jack died for me. Why I mean, did he, he did that? die for After you. After I killed that gang member, the wet boot boy suspected Jack. And being loyal and all, he did not refute the accusation. So what are you going to plan now? You are not going to spend the rest of your life hiding, Rodney. What are you planning to do? Honestly, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to live while so many have suffered because of me? Only you can answer that question. But one thing is certain. Since you owe Jack your life, I think it's fair to live it in a way that would make him proud. That's the kind of thing Jack could have said, Dr. Reed. Thank you for that. I believe you're a good guy too. We know all of his secrets. The death of your friend has affected you deeply, hasn't it? Jack Gillingham was the real deal. He believed we could change the world if we were united and focused enough. And he brought out the best in each of us. You're right. He died to save you. That alone gives me an idea of the kind of man he was. He was the bravest. And no one dares to say openly that he got killed by those bastards. Your friend's plan was audacious, if not reckless. No one stands up by themselves to a gang like the Wet Boot Boys. How dare you say that? You never met him. <laughs> oh, here we, we say a, a good thing. We, here we say a bad thing. Do you have recent news of Sean Hampton's shelter? I heard he kept on helping people. But I tried to stay away from his shelter. I don't feel safe there. Goodbye, Mr. Grader. Take care. And oh, there he is. Good evening, young man. There's no need to call me that, Dr. Reed. Okay, first of all, show me what you have to offer then. It sells pocket watches. 
You son of a bitch. We just gave this watch to Enid. And you already... Oh, son of a... Don't say bad things about your mate. Yeah, I mean... We shouldn't... We, yeah, most people Please, would, wouldn't be uh, happy on, about someone insulting their friends, true. Good evening, young man. No why did you why do you have this watch? Ex excuse me. Have you heard anything recently concerning Sean Hampton's shelter? He keeps investing time helping the poor and sick. Good for him. And for them. Goodbye. Uh Which way is Ennis? I've forgotten where she is. Yeah. Knock, knock. Good evening, Miss Gillingham. May I come in? Of course. Yeah, let's just skip this conversation. So, Doc. Why did you give away your, away your son's watch? Miss Gillingham, why did you give Martin Nightingale the watch I returned to you? I, I'm not sure. I. I don't know. I, I suppose I thought he needed a watch more than I did. I have no reason to really keep track of time anymore. Why don't you need to keep track of time? I've spent my entire life marching to the tick of clocks and the ringing of bells. At my age, it's nice to finally be rid of those burdens. On my time. I mean, honestly, it's just that because she's never gonna remember anything. At least she's... It's not like she's gonna remember the time or, or care about the time. But it was your son's watch, Miss Gillingham. It was, wasn't it? I'm relieved you found it. Besides, it's more useful to him anyway. Tell me, Enid, why do you feel guilty about your son? I know I'm a burden to my Jack. I know my mind and my thoughts are drifting away. I'm so sorry. I can't help it. This is not your doing, Miss Gillingham. You do not have to apologize for your condition. Of course I don't, Doctor. I've done nothing wrong, I swear it. What exactly are we talking about here? So we still don't know something about her, and we still don't know two things about him. Have you heard anything recently concerning Sean Hampton's shelter? I've never heard that name before, I'm afraid. Goodbye, Miss. Okay. Can we talk to you about the watch now? Good evening. There's no. Goodbye. Either there's a letter somewhere or there's going to be conversation between the two. Either way, it doesn't matter that much. We do wanna... We do wanna go here. Which is... This way, isn't it? No, it isn't. I lied. No, actually, it is. Oh, actually, it isn't. We can, we can just teleport from up here. Or for, or whatever. Can we? No, I lied again. Why does the map say that we can actually get through here? Oh yeah, I didn't lie. It's through here. That's just alright. Okay. 
And from here we have to go talk to the... To Mrs. Cox. Who is... Nova, yeah? 